So machine learning can solve three fundamental problems in cancer care. And the first one is access to care. Today, patient survival rate is a function of their geographical location. So what you see here is a map of the United States. And you see that there is a very weak correlation between the number of occurrences of cancer and the mortality in this state. The second question is a question of cost. Quality care costs a lot. By most conservative estimate, we are paying $80 billion per year for only for care. And as you can see, year after year, this cost continues to increase, making it unsustainable. So the question is, what can we get for all this cost? And this brings us to the second question, which is how effective is our care? So the good news, you can see that mortality is actually goes down, but it's very slow. Uh, for pancreatic cancer, five year survival rate is only 7%. Breast cancer is considered to be success, 90%. Half a million women every year die from this disease, so I can hardly call it a success. Despite all the amazing progress that we made in biology, in medicine, in the way how we can record information and all the measurements that we are taking about the patients, what I would say is that we are really in a primitive state in terms of machine learning and data science in processing this data. Imagine that you are a breast cancer patient. There will be thousands of pixels that record your mammogram your pathology slide may be digitized. Again, lots and lots of very specific information. Then the doctor reads it, writes you a story in a page. Then it's further distilled into a few variables. And those are the variables that give you the treatment. So this whole pipe line, you're losing information specific to a patient. And to make the matter worse, this is a statistic I want you to remember from this talk. According to American Society of Clinical Oncology, all the decisions today are based on 3% of the population that participated in clinical trial. The rest is just not used. Imagine what we can do if we utilize all this information. And that's exactly what we are trying to do at MIT. We're taking information about millions of patients, all their raw measurements, and try to predict their outcomes, uh, their sensitivity to treatment, the early diagnosis, and models of disease progression. And the first step here is to take all the data that currently is in language and extract specific things. So for instance, you want to know what are the features of specific cancer, what happened to the patient, machine cannot read it directly. So what we build at MIT is a system that takes this data and translates it into a table, into a database, where every patient, you record all the pertinent features of their cancer and their treatment. We can do it with a very high accuracy. We did it for the patients in the partner system, 96% accuracy. And let's say you want to study particular cancerous condition, let's say atypia. You can now write one or two queries and get all the patients that had this condition and see what happened to them over over the years. Previously to that, if you wanted to do it, you had to do it by hand. You had to go through all these patients and identify which one this condition. And you can see in New England Journal of Medicine, you publish about breast cancer with 600 cases. With one query, we can get it to 6,000 cases for a single hospital alone. So we can really study disease in a big scale and study it better. Another important case where this kind of structured approach can help us is to prevent overtreatment. For instance, if a woman today diagnosed with high risk breast lesion, it will be excised. Only 13% of them are cancer, which means that the rest of them did the surgery for nothing, disfiguring surgery. So in this case, with machine learning, we can predict 30% of the patients that are actually benign and spare them from the surgery. So now it brings me to the most exciting thing that happens in my lab, which is deep learning models that can read the raw measurements. In this case, mammograms. We can now do it rivaling human performance, both in terms of predicting cancer and assessing density. And what you will see is a movie that we made in Massachusetts General Hospital where exactly two weeks ago we installed these tools and you will see a radiologist which before they look at the mammogram they have machine reading of the mammogram. Uh, this is my collaborator Connie Lehman. She just looks at it and approves the reading of the machine. So this is really exciting. The part that personally excites me is to be able to do stuff better than humans can do. What you see here is a breast cancer patient me in 2014. What you would see that my cancer was in the breast since 2012 and it progressed. So the question is how early machine can predict something that human cannot do and that's exactly what we are training our deep learning models to do.
So I would like to conclude my talk by showing you the map of the cancer. And this is mortality. And you can see there is a lot of red in this map. And what I firmly believe, that with advancement in machine learning and big data, we can really democratize cancer care and wipe out the red. Thank you. Thank you.